So the Lions Feed Control Unit is a device central in the operation, sort of particularly on a dredging situation with wet solids. Uh, allows material to come in in various feed rates and store it in a stable condition and with judicial injection of water we can then discharge it to the downstream processing equipment at a constant feed rate and density and this is, allows the plant to be optimised in its performance. The, uh, the, the bin is all about having the right wall angles and uh, surface finish to give you generate mass flow in that bin in the LFCU to ensure that we have that stable condition. What does it actually do for a plant? What's the, the major benefits of the Lions Fee Control Unit for a process plant? Well, the big thing about a process plant is it's having control. So you, you want repeatability. If you were running the plant today at 100 tonne an hour and at 35% density, you want to be doing the same thing again tomorrow and you see how the equipment performs and if, then you can look at adjusting that whatever Fine variables. Fine tuning the processing yeah, equipment. Adjust the variables to, to see how you can improve the performance. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that control, and you know every day you go in, the, the, the LFCU is going to give you the same slurry stream to deal with, then you, you, you have more confidence and what those changes you make, what benefit there may be from it. And it allows you to then move closer towards the optimum of the plant mm -hmm. performance. Welcome Craig, thanks for coming uh, to chat about the Lions Fee Control Unit today. Uh, quickly, tell us about yourself. I've been with Mineral Technology since 1998 and currently in the role of uh, Principal Process Consultant looking at process design solutions within Australia and across the world. Craig, what's the value of the Lions Fee Control Unit to Mineral Technologies customers and the industry in the broad? The LFCU is designed primarily to act as a large surge capacity device within the mineral processing industry, and that can be domestically or internationally. Okay, so for a range of commodities. And what I mean by what its function involves is essentially providing a very stable controlled discharge slurry to downstream processing, such as spirals. And it does that by adding a very large surge capacity component from fluctuating inputs of feed. So it can effectively disconnect fluctuating inputs and give a very stable output. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is the function of the bin and there's some very unique um, functionality and design parameters within that bin that allows that to happen. Within the way the bin operates, essentially, we've got a slurry environment where we allow material to fully settle. Mm -hmm. and consolidate in that bin. And once that material is consolidated, we then refluidize that material using water at a number of injection points at the base of the bin to transfer that material out of the base at a very controlled solids to water ratio. Now whilst that sounds relatively simple, the design parameters around to get that to work is, is similar to um, a dry bulk solids bin where you might have grain or uh, lime passing through mm -hmm. a, a bin and out, understanding that fluid flow as a solid, the trick was converting that into a wet environment. Converting the design from, to make it work in the slurry environment meant that we had to learn from uh, dry processing of bulk materials, handling properties of fine powders mm -hmm. such as um, lime. Okay? So we, we took those learnings and developed, tried to develop a mass flow bin in a slurry environment. That meant a change in the process in terms of how we test it and how we undo that. And it's using effectively a submerged Jenneke shear test mm. technique, which mm. is relatively unique, in fact is unique, for the application of slurries in a mining environment. Mm -hmm. So what are the applications that the Mines Feed Control Unit is, is used in? So the first application was in mineral sands, controlling feed through into a gravity circuit using spiral concentrators. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was successfully deployed back in 2006. And from that time we've looked at a number of opportunities outside of the traditional mineral sand space. And we've moved into looking at iron ore and we've successfully deployed uh, one of those operations in uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're deploying them throughout uh, Western Australia in magnetite and we're doing large amounts of work in conventional hematite processing around the world so 
the opportunities are there outside of mineral sands. Following that as well, you start thinking about it, it's really any um, finely sized particle in the mineral space where you've got a slurry environment, you can utilise it. So you can use it in tin, tantalum, chrome, mm -hmm. copper, gold. It's really fine and the right application where this device's unique capabilities can be utilised to improve our client's processes. And we're still at the early phases of trying to identify where we can expand this process around the world into different applications. Maybe tell us a bit more about this tailings application and, and, and the benefits mm. that we're seeing there. And certainly, so apart from the power and water savings associated with pumping at high, high pulp density, 65, 66% solids, when you have a reasonably coarse mineralised sand such as we have in Senegal, you can then effectively direct deposit out of a boom stacker and get sand settling in a nice stack without the need for doing secondary stacking with the hydrocycler in the field. Right, so, that, so open pipe discharge. Open pipe discharge. At high densities. At high densities minimises requirement for secondary stacking devices. Right, which is so means less dozers moving machinery out, around on site, stackers having to be dragged around. Precisely, precisely. And it means that you can actually close the size of the pit much closer because you're discharging closer to the plant. So you, you, your total area disturbed by the mining right. environment is much smaller. So there's a number of benefits that accumulate with using this technique. Right. And so without a lines fee control unit in that tailings process, well, why can't you, you pump it 65% solids? Well, the problem is when you get, we say 65% solids, you get very close to the limit of pumping with a centrifugal pump, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so the risk is if you get above 70, 75% solids, typically in a centrifugal pump with sand, you effectively run the risk of essentially it stopping to pump. And that's not a particularly good scenario when you're trying to move 6,000 tonnes an hour of, all, uh, of tailings, so you don't want to stop the pump. So having the feed control, lion's feed control unit with a very, very stable discharge slurry density allows you to incrementally push up towards a limit of pumpability. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously, you couldn't, that high variability that you'd have out of a conventional system would mean that you'd have to run at a much lower set point, typically right. 50, 55 percent solids. Yep. So it allows for those times when you spike above 65 to 70 percent solids, which right. is causing company issues. So operationally, you run at a very low pulp density to be conservative. But with the LFCU, those spikes aren't there. With the LFCU, the spikes aren't there. We can run within plus or minus 1% solids, pulp density. Yeah. So we can nudge up towards that point. So when you talk about um, density control to a process plant downstream, what, what sort of range are you talking? What sort of tolerance? What, what is density control with okay. the LFCU? So we've got demonstrated proof of when these bins are operating that around a set point, we can maintain density within plus or minus 1% solids by right. weight. Okay. Um, and even better with fine tuning and a very stable operation, you can actually get quite lower than that as need be. But that's far away, that is considerably better than typical surge bins in the past or traditional surge bins with density control in modern plus or minus 3 to 4%. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's a very large variation with downstream processing events. Yeah. So do the people operating these lines for control units need to be um, process engineers? So mineral technologies do provide training, on-site training, to allow plant operators, whether it be engineers, plant operators or supervisors, explanation of how the bin works, why it works, and then what levers they have to control the bin during normal operating practices. Right. And through that method, they'll be able to maximise or even optimise the performance of the bin with an overall view of the whole plant being optimised with, with very good density control. Right. So let's talk autogenous classification for mm. a second. It's a new mm. bit of a new term and yes. uh, something that's been applied to the lion's feed control unit. Yes. But we are um, we are using it in more for more than just feed control now. Um, do you want to just explain um, explain mm. that to us. Yes, yeah, certainly. So the autogenous classification has come out really of observations we've done with test work in our laboratory. As we know with the bin, the LFCU operates on the basis of particles settling in a cone. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, we get finer particles rising the top and overflowing. So there's a natural classification function within that bin. We've observed that with certain particles and certain mineral suites, that that can correlate with 
actual particle separation in terms of minerals as well. So mm -hmm. we'll get the finer, low density uh, clays, aluminas and silicates overflowing, the higher density materials such as iron ore, ilmenite, and titanium, zircon settling. So you, apart from a size classification, you also get a mineral classification right. effect. We say it's done autogenously because there's no other function happening other than the solid liquid separation. So there's nothing else there driving it. It's essentially autogenous classification based upon the mixtures of the, in the slurry and the geometry of the beak. So where do you see the technology developing from here? What's the future for the LFCU? Yeah. Well certainly, I mean it's, it's been around certainly in the mineral technology space from early inception back in 2006 with the first application. Over the last uh, 14 years we've seen it really grow and I think we're really now at the cusp of exploring where it can take us. So we understand its ability to densify, to perform surge control between functions. Now we're exploring the fact that there's an autogenous classification effect that we yep. can use for solids, liquids and also minerals. I think we're at the verge of really understanding where this can take us, okay, and outside of its normal comfort zone. And I think the more we learn about its capabilities and the natural flow dynamics within the bin and overflowing the bin, we can then explore a whole range of minerals, and perhaps not even minerals. Maybe we can look at other functions such as fertilizers and other, other industrial forms of particles, solid particles, that need some sort of separation at very high capacity. So I think we're at the beginning, albeit 14 years or so, we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. So just for those who are interested, take us through the range of sizes of LFCUs. What, what, what is available? So within our laboratory, we have a 200 millimeter diameter unit, which is three or four meters high. We've got a pilot scale two meter unit, which runs in the field, okay, right up into the court large mineral sands ones that are running at Senegal, they're 17 metres diameter running at six to seven thousand tonnes an hour. And now into ultra fine iron ore, they're at 24 metres diameter. Oh yeah. And so, what sort of through, throughput rates are we seeing through the line speed control units? Yeah, it, the feed rate is really dependent upon the application, particularly particle size. Mm -hmm. So for normal sand sizes, we can get up to six or seven thousand tonnes an hour out of each unit. For ultra fine magnetite, 23, 24 micron particles, a 24 metre bin will get 1,000, 1,500 tonnes right. of water. So it's very much application driven and essentially that's why we have quite an extensive test facility here at Carrara to actually explore those opportunities in detail. Mm -hmm. So for some of our customers who have existing surge bins, maybe the more traditional types with the flatter wall angles, mm. Um, is there any option for them other than complete re replacement of their surge bins? Absolutely. I mean, if the bin is still functional, the traditional bin, typically traditional bins are quite flat. 40, like 45, 45 degree, degree wall degree angles. Yeah, wall angles. And the lion's feet controllers tend to be much deeper, upwards of 60 degrees wall angle. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's simply to allow the mass flow properties of the bin, and that angle does vary according to specific application and the mm -hmm. particles and the densities. For customers with existing conventional style surge bins, we have retrofitted an LFCU design principles inside those bins very successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, this has an advantage because changing out an existing bin is, tends to be quite high capital cost. Yep. But for us to get there, what we need to do is do some fundamental test work on the, on the material, the sand mm -hmm. or, or feed material and then design the internal inserts that we place inside that bin with the right geometry to match your existing bin. Right. So it's quite a simple process in terms of doing the test work, doing the design and putting the inserts in, but allows you to maximise your existing asset. Yeah, and so we've seen some reasonable improvements in performance? There's been substantial improvements in performance. Be able to get much improved resonance time within that bin because we've got more consolidation so that we improve the resonance time. We've also improved the output in terms of stability of density control. One of the great applications of FCU relates to dredge operations. Okay? Where dredge operation in typical mineral sands plant dredge mines in a dredge pond feeds material into a spiraling circuit. Now the way the dredge operates has a very large swing in terms of left and right and vertically through the pond and what you get is a very large fluctuation 
in tonnage into that bin. So if it's designed for, say, a thousand ton hour average, you'll see it when it's sweeping the bottom of the pond, it might jump to two and a half thousand tonnes per hour for that 30 or 40 second interval. And then it'll drop down to four or five hundred tonnes an hour mm -hmm. as it swings back. So you get this very high, high variation, effectively shock loading the plant. The LFC is designed to absorb that fluctuation and give a very constant stable output at the base. Mm -hmm. Talking about the application's specifics, there's been one, a couple of interesting challenges when you look at uh, grade variability. So you may have a constant feed coming into the plant in terms of tonnes per hour, but you find that the, constant, the, the heavy mineral grade coming into that plant varies, say from 5% to 10%, down to 2%, even though constant tonnage. What that means is when you get to the back end of the plant, you have a very, very high variation in concentrate going through to the final mm -hmm. cleaning stages or processing stages. And that provides a real problem for those sections of the plant because they're effectively shock loaded by very high swinging tonnages, which is detrimental to efficiency. So what we've done is put a small LFCU, 100, 200 tonnes capacity, basically between the, the primary stages and the cleaning stages to effectively buffer out the grade variation through. And what that's done is allowed that back end of the plant to be sized appropriately so it doesn't have to handle the massive surge. And secondly, it allows it to run at very, very controlled conditions, therefore maximising the upgrade potential and maximising the recovery. Right. So, so the combination of, and that plant was fed by a dredge, so we had the primary LFCU stabilising the dredge tonne variation, then we had the secondary LFCU in the cleaner circuit stabilising the grade variation. Yep. Thinking about the application of the LFCU in the hematite, hematite industry within uh, Western Australia, iron ore business, mm -hmm. hematite, girthite. Uh, a couple of the key, key challenges for the industry is declining grades, product grades. And particularly some of the contaminants associated with, uh, with that are, is alumina and just to a lesser extent silica. Now the LFCU is particularly beneficial in these areas because if you were to put a material in there, you'll get the higher density hematite settling to the base and being forwarded through to the secondary circuits. And what you'll find is that the lower density materials such as alumina and silica tend to be autogenously classified to the overflow of the bin. So the main aim is, is alumina and uh, silica removal.